Damien Evans, the director of the University of Sydney's uh, Archaeological Research Centre here in Cambodia. The University of Sydney's been been involved in the work for, for 13 years now here at Angkor. And, you know, we found similar things in different areas and different places, but it's been a very gradual process over the course of, uh, of a decade or more. Um, whereas what we have now with this instrument is just, bang, all of a sudden uh, an immediate picture of, a, uh, of an entire city uh, that people didn't know was there before, uh, which, is, which is remarkable. So instead of this kind of very long, gradual process, you have this kind of sudden eureka moment where... You you know, you bring the data up on screen for the first time and there it is, uh, this ancient city very clearly in front of you. Today what we've been doing is basically going around uh, to different areas um, in, in this Phnom Kulen zone uh, that we've identified as being areas of interest using the LiDAR data. As you can see, our, our guide is missing a leg. According to the GPS, uh, we've just arrived at the outside edge of the dome field and you see the slope of the land going up here, this is just the edge of the dome. Uh, so we're just about to, uh, to climb up onto the top of uh, the first of the domes in this big field. So uh, what looks to be just forest or, or scrubland, uh, uh, kind of empty landscape, uh, actually we can see from above very clearly used to be um, part of the medieval urban fabric of, of Angkor. Uh, and so there are these features uh, like roadways, canals, uh, and these very strange kind of domes, we call them, these uh, big mounds on the landscape um, that we need to go and investigate on the ground just to see what they actually are. Uh, it's not enough just to kind of look from the air and, and see these things and say, oh, you know, hey, there's an Angkorian feature. Uh, we actually need to go out and verify uh, what we're seeing on the ground as well, uh, which is not an easy business, but it's, uh, it's necessary to do at least part of it. So, by and large, the remains of the temples have disappeared um, or, or are buried. Um, sometimes the temples may have even been made of wood, um, but a, a surefire way of telling that this was a temple is the existence of uh, one of these pedestals here. Um, so every tower uh, during the Angkor period had one of these pedestals right in the middle of the, uh, uh, the tower, uh, which was where the, the central statue uh, uh, was placed into this pedal, pedestal. This, this one's fallen on its side, but we know very clearly that this was a temple uh, on account of this being here. Axis of, uh, it's not in the axis, right? no, it, it reached a corner so somehow. Wow. Uh, oh. It's cool. That's way cool, actually. Like 380 meters so new the, model? The you you've never seen anyone like this? It's, it's half and half. It's some kind of transitional thing between a pre-Angkorian <coughs> and an anchor. It's a hybrid. <coughs> nice. Wow. So the, that's good. I'm taking a linger sits in the middle yeah, yes, I'm of this like here. Oh, whoa. There are a lot of temples known um, previously in, in this Phnom Kulen area, uh, several dozen temples, um, but it was previously uh, understood to be just a collection of, of isolated temples. So if you looked at a map of this area, you'd see a scatter of points uh, just kind of here and there in, in the forest. Um, uh, the dimension that the LiDAR has added to that uh, picture um, is basically to, to fill in the blanks uh, between those points on the map. So now instead of isolated points we have a whole network of, uh, of highways of roadways um, of urban features like these strange domes which kind of links everything together um, and we can see quite clearly for the first time you know the, the layout of, uh, of the city um, and so we don't just have this very partial view uh, from structures like this one behind me we have pretty much a, a, a well a much more complete picture of the the urban landscape and it allows us to come to much better conclusions about what went on in places like this Our main goal, if we talk about the archaeological activities, is to uh, map uh, the mountain, uh, to research and to excavate uh, any archaeological sites and to uh, implicate the government into the conservation of those sites. The result has, has brought, uh, basically, it's like if you have uh, the church of a town on, on our western world, uh, but you can see only the, the, the ruins of the church, but now we have the cities, the boulevard, the avenues, uh, the canal, you know, the hydrological system. So we, we had bits of it, you know, we had the main dikes, the main canal, but we couldn't imagine that was uh, such an intense uh, occupation, an intense um, modification of the landscape. Also, they must have cut a lot of forest at that time to, uh, to do all these, these features. Uh, what is very surprising also is that it's 
very similar to Encore, which means it's very orientated east-west or north-south, which is easy to do on a flat plane like Encore, but in Kulen, uh, it's still the main constraint for us before the LiDAR was the, the topography, which is uh, not really flat, and also the vegetation. And, and with a tool like a LiDAR, you kind of uh, avoid uh, and have a, a great image of a city coming out, so it's a great a great input, but still uh, years of work coming on. The reason that we're here, uh, and the reason why this place is really interesting, uh, although it just looks like a rice field around us, uh, actually if you look uh, from above and have a kind of aerial perspective, you can see that uh, this is actually a temple site. Uh, so this mound that's right behind me here uh, is in the centre of a, of a large uh, enclosed complex uh, which would have housed uh, the temple. Um, this is actually uh, incredibly unique uh, in, in terms of this area, in, in terms of it being unlooted. So it's completely undisturbed by, by looters. So um, this is one of the real advantages of the LiDAR, is that you can see things on the landscape that are so subtle um, that, that even looters, uh, local people and so on, uh, don't know that they, that they were temples. Um, you know, they would have no conception of this being a temple at one stage. So uh, we can see that it is though, um, not only from this aerial perspective, uh, but the reason why we, we go tramping through the jungle for extended periods of time uh, is to uh, confirm uh, uh, the fact that it was a temple using stuff like this that we find on the ground. So what we have here is a brick, um, uh, which signifies that this was a, a religious structure, uh, because all non-religious structures were, were made of wood. Uh, so this is uh, basically a, a, a temple uh, devoted uh, probably to a a god. Um, we don't see many of these bricks, there's not much evidence of this around here, uh, and that's largely because this temple is, is unlooted, uh, so the looters haven't dug down and, uh, and thrown material all, all over the place, but it's very clear that this is a, a temple site, so it's quite an amazing discovery. You know, the, the Angkor area is so much more than just a, a single temple. I mean, people normally associate uh, Angkor with just Angkor Wat, not realizing actually that it's a collection of, uh, of at least a thousand temples uh, scattered over a huge area of you know, several hundred square kilometers. Um, and so, uh, actually, the, uh, the Kulan is, is just kind of one component of that, of that extended landscape. Um, and for instance, the water that we see behind us here, um, this is the water that flows down into the huge reservoirs. This is the water that they used for irrigation to sustain the civilization. So where we are here, the Kulan Mountains, was, a, was an integral component of, uh, uh, of Angkor. Yeah, it, it's amazing. I mean, we, we had uh, reasonable expectations, I guess, of, uh, of what we would find using the, the LiDAR data. Um, but uh, what we've uh, ended up with has, has just blown our minds. I mean, it, it's just absolutely incredible what, what we can see. I mean, it's far exceeded our expectations uh, in terms of the features that we've uncovered, how clearly we can see things like temples, um, the new things that we had no idea that were there. I mean, it's, it's really the future of remote sensing in, in archaeology. And I would expect in five or ten years' time for it to be absolutely routine. The next step from here, I mean, uh, the way forward probably is uh, is to increase our coverage, uh, to increase the aerial extent, uh, because you can see in the, in the mapping work that Stefan has done, you know, uh, uh, the new features extend right to the to the end of the uh, to the edge of the lidar data, uh, and that's just because the lidar data ends there. I mean, it's almost certain that this city was much larger than um, this picture that we're seeing from from our very limited coverage. So, uh, I guess from my point of view, the next step will be to to try and increase and expand that coverage, uh, so we can get a really complete picture of. Uh, of what these cities look like. Um, but that of course takes uh, a lot of money, it's an expensive technology, um, and so we have to work pretty hard towards uh, uh, fundraising, to convincing people that it's worthwhile and, and so on, which is, which is a big challenge. Um, but like I said, I think in a few years this will be uh, an absolutely routine thing, um, but we're just kind of pioneering the approach, I guess, he here in Angkor.